The Eddie Sutton Show. Brought to you by Johnson's of Kingfisher and Chickasha, and now Enid, your Dodge, Chrysler, and Plymouth dealers. And by Farm Fresh. You can almost taste the sunshine and the good things from Farm Fresh. Now, here's your host, Bill Teagan. Hi everybody and welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. It's been a busy opening couple of weeks for the Cowboys 5-2. and two. Coach, you've played seven games in the first 16 uh, days of the season. It's unbelievable. We'll never do that again either because uh, <laughs> what it has happened, we haven't had enough time in practice uh, to correct some of the errors and I think it really uh, showed up the other night in our, our last ball game against LSU. I'm pleased with some of the things we're doing, but we just need to get back to the practice court and we'll be able to do that now that finals are over. Uh, next week before we depart for uh, Hawaii, uh, I think we can get some of these things corrected. The biggest disappointment has been in our defense. We just have given up too many points. Well, we've been to a lot of different cities and played a lot of different types of teams. we got a lot of basketball highlights to show you, and we'll do that when we come back on the Eddie Sutton Show. And welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. We've had a lot of basketball already, as we said, uh, seven games under the Cowboy belt. The first one, which seems like a long time ago, was at the Maybe Center, taking on Providence, a great basketball game, Coach. One of the best games, uh, if you weren't emotionally involved in this game, uh, I guess that uh, I've ever, ever seen. I mean, I've had people come to me and say, boy, that was a terrific game, and it was. Both teams played with a lot of intensity. Providence is a good basketball team. I think they've dropped one game since they left uh, Oklahoma and uh, they'll be in the upper division of the Big East Conference but a very high scoring game uh, very wide open game uh, the game goes overtime and in overtime we score a lot of points and win but we had to make a remarkable rally to get there but you'll see some outstanding shooting on the part of both ball clubs and great penetrating drive by their little point guard very alertly we picked the ball up lead pass to uh, Fred Burley by Keontae Roberts Easy basket. There we go again. Fred had a lot of points offensively, really played well in that game. I think we had four players that uh, scored, uh, if I'm not mistaken, about 100 points, which is almost uh, unbelievable. Uh, if someone had told me uh, a team of mine would give up 102 points, we'd still win, <laughs> I wouldn't have believed it, but we got 113. We are playing a little faster this year. We're averaging 89 points a ball game, and we're certainly scoring enough points to uh, be undefeated, but we've just given up too many uh B baskets at the other end, too many defensive breakdowns, but you can see this game was nip and tuck all the way. Nice drive. Fred's very good at uh, putting the ball on the deck and uh, one, two, bouncing it and, and, and driving to the basket. You're down by one at that point, but I'll tell you, Brooks Thompson, and, and it's amazing to me the change in a year's time, the way he's played this season and a year ago. Well, if you had to grade all of our players up to this point, Brooks Thompson certainly would grade higher than anyone. He's playing well at both ends of the floor, and he uh, has given us a lot of positive leadership, but he has matured a great deal and a much better player than he was last year. Very nice defensive play. That's what you call running through a pass, and Fred took it all the way for an easy basket. Our ball club shooting... Uh, 55% uh, from the field and 47% from three-point range, but one thing has been a bugaboo and one thing we're going to work on during the uh, holidays, free throw shooting. 61%, that's not very good. You're going to lose a lot of ball games if you don't shoot a higher percentage than that. Is that a mental thing, free throw shooting? Well, I don't know. You know, Brian Reeves is the guy that's most uh, guilty of anyone. Some of our guys are shooting free throws. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's shooting 53% and he's the guy that's going to get fouled more than anyone. So. He's got to get out there and, and work on his uh, free pitches. Boy, Brooks, though, hit some really key shots, probably played as well as he's played in his Oklahoma State well, career. I've game. had a lot of great guards and had a lot of those guys have great performances. But in this particular game, uh, late there, he hit some big baskets, and uh, he certainly would, uh, his performance would have to rate one of the best I've ever seen a guard play. He made some courageous plays late that allowed us to win. If he doesn't make those plays, uh, you don't win this basketball game. There's a good point uh, where Bryant Reeves was leaning into the basket. We, we call it taking the ball to the hoop. The other night down at uh, New Orleans, he goes eight for 20, and he wasn't doing that. He was fading away. And a lot of times uh, when a big guy does that, he doesn't get fouled. And in that particular game, he went to the line one time, and he shot 20 attempts. So I think that's one of the reasons that uh, we didn't win the basketball game. Bryant did not have a good game down there against the Tigers. Well, oh, this one, though, is really a thriller. Again, this is against Providence in the opener. The crowd really 
your home away from home at the Baby Center. The best crowd as far as helping us uh, that we've ever had over there. And here's Brian, or here's uh, Brooks driving the ball to the basket, and that ties the game. Here, here we take another look at it. That's a gutsy move right there. If Brooks continues to improve, uh, I think he still needs to work on his defense. Sometimes he still makes mistakes with the basketball and judgment. Shooting the ball extremely well, but he's got a chance to uh, take his game to a higher level. But we still have a lot of games to go, and I think since he is a senior, uh, no one works harder than Brooks on the practice court, and he wants his ball club to challenge for the Big Eight and to do well in the NCAA, but uh, he's certainly doing his part. Well, we're into overtime now, and Brooks steps up and hits another one from out the top if of the I'm not circle. mistaken, I think he had 24 points in the second half and in the mm -hmm. overtime, and that's, that's a lot of points. And there you see a drive. He's left-handed, but he drives uh, hard to the right, stops, hits the shot, gets fouled, converts, three-point play. Here you go, Randy Rutherford, lead pass to uh, Fred Burley. Fred uh, finishes the shot off well. He's very good in transition when uh, you can get him the basketball. They're pressing. We throw to what we call the deep feeder, throw the ball to one of our people near the midcourt area, and the guards break, and uh, Brian Reeves hit Randy Rutherford for the basket. And here we look at the last shot, uh, 113 to 102, big win for us. So the Cowboys are 1-0, then it's right back into action at SMU, another nationally televised game. You've been on television a lot already. Well, we certainly have, and uh, Moody uh, Coliseum is a, a great place to play basketball. Uh, we had so many uh, super uh, contests uh, when I was at Arkansas when we would go in there. It's a neat place for the fans, neat place to play. Another example of running through passes, Brooks Thompson uh, overplayed the passing lane, ran through, intercepted, laid it up. Cowboys playing very well at this point. You know, early in the season, Randy shot the ball pretty well in the first game of the year, then went through a, a Rutherford about three or four games where he really struggled. He appears to be back on track now. He had an outstanding shooting game down at uh, LSU the other night. Good lead pass by Scott Sutton. Another look at it to, to Brian Reeves, and he takes it home. Boy, Scott is really good at getting the ball inside to Brian. Well, he's the best uh, passer we have as far as uh, getting the ball into the pivot area. He's has 35 assists on the season, only five turnovers. That's a remarkable st stat. Five-point lead at halftime for the Cowboys. Second half, Oklahoma State goes to work again. Well, they had a hard time uh, covering Bryant inside any time. You want to establish that inside game, and, and uh, when the defense collapses, then uh, Bryant's got to use better judgment and kick the ball out. The two losses, that uh, has not occurred at uh, Phoenix against Arizona and the other night against LSU when he got double teamed. Too often, uh, he went ahead and shot the ball instead of uh, kicking the ball out. You know, you've been awfully busy, as we've talked about in the first two weeks, but you've played a lot of different styles of basketball or teams that play different styles. That's got to help you in the long run. Well, I hope so. I hope, uh, you know, when you play non-conference games, and this is the toughest schedule that uh, an Oklahoma State team probably has played for a long while, uh, you're going to expose your uh, weaknesses when you play different types of ball club. And uh, what you try and do there, then go back and correct those things before you get into Big 8 competition which uh, means that we've got it you know, over two weeks before that occurs. So we do have some time to uh, get some of these things uh, straightened out. We're at gallagher Iba Arena for the first time taking on Oral Roberts University. Bill Self's return to Gallagher. Well, Bill's had a tough time. Uh, he's uh, certainly did a lot for Oklahoma State, uh, helped us the first three years I was here. Uh, he'll build a good program at ORU, but in this particular game, this is the best game we played all season. Not the fact that we won 94 to 52, but our defense was excellent. We took charges. When somebody made a mistake, we helped each other. Uh, right here is a good example. We step over, we got beat on a, on a drive to the basket, but someone was there to give support and they drew the charge. And we shot the ball extremely well. Boy, Scott has also stepped up his game this season. Hitting from outside was six of his first 10 attempts. He was good on from three point range. Well, he's. Uh, he, too, is a senior, and I think uh, when you look at Brendan Manzer, Scott Sutton, the fact that they are seniors, uh, even though they maybe don't score as much as some of the other players, they certainly bring a lot of positive things to our squad, and the other two seniors being Fred Burley and uh, Brooks Thompson, and they're both starters. Country inside again. The Cowboys, ORU played pretty well for about the first eight, ten minutes of the game, and then you had an unbelievable, I think, a 31-1 run, and the game was over, obviously, at that point. You know, when you get a run, you want to extend it as long as you can, and when momentum goes against you, you want to curtail it. And uh, Bill had a hard time. I think he called timeout, tried to change his defense, and did several things, but he just couldn't stop us, and uh, it was almost like an avalanche. And 
Uh, we don't ever want to beat anyone over 20 points, but sometimes that you can't keep from doing that when you play everyone. You don't you don't ever tell your players not to play hard, and uh, all of our players contributed in this ball game. Nice pass by Keontae off to Scott Sutton for an easy two. And there's this is Jason Tucker, only walk on. That shot should have counted, and the official look at him. He's excited. Well, he but uh, he said that it way. went in after the buzzer. Well, 94-52 again the final, so the Cowboys off to a great start at this point at 3-0. We've got a lot more basketball to show you, four games coming up, and we'll take a look at those when the Eddie Sutton Show continues. And welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. The Cowboys at this point of the year are 3-0 oh as we head into the fourth game. It's back to the Maybe Center, our second trip uh, to Tulsa against the Arizona State Sun Devils. Of course, one of your good friends, Bill Frieder. Bill Frieder is a very good friend, and uh, he, of course, he was the one that put uh, the great Michigan team together a few years ago and uh, then resigned to take this position at Arizona State before the NCAA tournament. And, Bo Schembechler wouldn't let him coach the ball club, and Steve Fisher, his assistant, who is now the head coach, took over and won a national championship. But Bill is, is building a very good basketball program at Arizona State. His team was a little crippled up in this ball game, and they jump out on us early, hit some big shots, and uh, now all of a sudden we're having to play catch up. But there's Brooks Thompson doing one of the things that he does best, shoot those threes. You had another great run. Again, as you fell behind 12-3, to three, then you got another good run, and, and that's been sort of a... Uh, the way it's been for you guys this year? Well, the one thing that uh, I haven't mentioned is we have had some great moments as far as momentum in our favor, but we also had some very dry periods. I use the term, we, we're, we're down in Death Valley, and that, those are the things you got to eliminate. You can't go two, three, four minute stretches, which we've seen in, in uh, uh, our games thus far, and really not have anything happen uh, from a positive standpoint. So we've got to become more consistent and play, uh, you don't, you're never going to play 40 minutes of perfect basketball, but you certainly have to uh, have longer periods than what we've had. Good play by Terry Collins, who challenged the shot hard, uh, got a knockdown, he uh, released, and Bryant Reeves hit him with a lead pass, and we got an easy two points. You know, one of the key things, I, I think, too, was the fact in that game, Headache Smith really struggled there until the very end of the game. Well, he certainly did, and you can see we jumped out on him, and we're up 60-37 to 37 about halfway through the uh, second half. Uh, one reason we're shooting 55%, uh, we're showing a lot of easy shots being made off our defense where we go down or we haven't got so many putbacks, but our defense has given us some easy baskets. And you got to have easy baskets if your team's going to shoot 55% from the field. Country of career highs, you saw 34. Now it's on the road again, out to Phoenix, taking on Arizona. Seems like to me we've been on the road <laughs> almost all the time. You know, out of the seven games, we've only played two here in Gallagher, Iowa, and that's usually. Uh, Kind of unusual for you know ball clubs like ourselves, but the reasons that we had to do that uh, financially, we had a big guarantee by going out to Phoenix and playing in the Fiesta Bowl Classic here against the University of Arizona. Arizona's the best team that we have faced. They've got, I think, maybe the best pair of guards uh, in the country. If not, uh, they're certainly one of the four or five best combinations. And we got behind, and one thing you never want to do is get behind on the road and then have to play catch up all night, and that's what we did. We pulled up to six points in the second half, but we just never could get over the hump. There's a good penetrating dribble by uh, Brooks Thompson. He kicked the ball out to Keontae Roberts, and Keontae hit the, the basket. Good hustle play defensively. Three on one break, and uh, we get the easy basket. Again, every time you got it within range, it seems like Arizona came up with a big shot of its own. You got it, as you said, within six with about uh, five minutes to go. But they came back and hit the shots, and Arizona wins that well, one. Arizona probably, Bill, is uh, one of the two or three best teams on the West Coast. Uh, they will, uh, they've pretty much dominated the Pac-10 the last few years, and they'll be one of the two or three teams. I guess UCLA and Arizona probably are the two best teams on the West Coast. We're back home at Gallagher taking on TCU. Taking on another good friend of mine, Mo Iba, who, uh, of course, played here, and his father's, in my opinion, the greatest coach ever coached the game of basketball. And... Uh, Mo is hurting at the, in the guard positions right now, and you can see Brooks Thompson strips their uh, freshman guard, and uh, as his guards mature a little bit, I think he's going to have a, a ball club that can contend in the Southwest Conference because he's got uh, two or three big guys, pretty good players, one in particular. Yeah, Kurt Thomas, good player, got the bucket here on the other side. And again, you guys just really took off and uh, well, great here, pass there. Well, we're running extremely well. When I say you got to have easy baskets, well, you can get those off your defense, and maybe you don't always get layups, but you get uh, fast break baskets. And there was a nice uh, over-the-head pass by uh, Brooks Thompson 
to Scott Pierce and he uh, laid it home and we got a, a 20 point lead at halftime. And it's inside the country again and boy when he gets when he is uh, aggressive, gets the ball inside and turns and goes right to the hoop, there's not much doubt about it. Well, Brian has had some very good games, but he's had some that uh, he, that have really not been up to his uh, standards. Uh, he's got to understand, though, every time he goes on the court, well, he is going to be a target. Everybody's going to be out to stop him, and uh, he better understand that he's going to get double and triple teamed, and when that happens, he's got to read the defense and kick the ball off to the open person. And now it's on to New Orleans. National television again taking on the LSU Tigers. A couple of your buddies right yeah, there. Tim Brando and Dick Vitale. <laughs> I've known those guys for a long while. And uh, National television uh, wasn't one of our best performances. In fact, I thought this was probably the poorest effort uh, that we've had. Uh, we didn't play well at the defensive end. And then Bryant was 8 out of 20 from the field. And we only got to the line four times. That's phenomenal. Isn't it? And uh, that's hard to believe, but uh, sometimes if you're not as aggressive as you need to be, you're not going to get fouled. Well, the Cowboys battling all the way. This one was obviously in question right down to the end, and you've played a couple of those games too that have gone right down to the wire. Well, we had our chances. Uh, we were down five at halftime. Uh, we came back, uh, played a little bit better, had a chance to win, didn't make the plays that you need to make. Uh, too many turnovers, 23 turnovers. And I would say nine of those were unforced errors, just carelessness on, on the part of our players. And, and those are the things uh, that uh, probably irritate me more than anything, just mental mistakes or careless turnovers. Well, Randy Rutherford st stepped up and made some great three-pointers in that game to keep you in it. Well, I was happy to see Randy because uh, shoot the as well as he, as he did because he really hadn't shot the ball as well overall in our first six games as uh, we saw him shoot last year. But he lit it up in this game. I think he had five three-pointers in the second half. A couple of them from way out there, too, and one with the uh, shot clock ticking away. Right there, we play great defense, and we don't sustain it all the way, and the guy hits one at the buzzer just before the clock, uh, the, the timer goes off. Now we're up three. We come back. Fred hits two free throws. Our defense forces a turnover. Now we got a chance to win the game, even though we haven't played well. Right here, we go inside, and if you look, Fred Burley's wide open underneath the basket. Randy was open at the top of the circle, and and Bryant made up his mind he was going to shoot the ball. He turned blindly, and uh, they made a good defensive play, and we turn it over and we lose the ball game. It's a tough way to lose, and again, a, a tough going on the road to play some of these teams, but that's what you want to do early. Well, like I said earlier in the show, we schedule too many games. Seven games in 16 days is too many, especially when only two of them are in your <laughs> ballpark. And uh, what it did, it really took away some practice time that we needed to get some things corrected. Uh, this week we've been in final exams. Uh, most of the guys have their tests over. Uh, we play this Saturday night against Cal State Davis. Next Monday night in Tulsa again against the University of Tulsa. And uh, Tubby Smith's got a good ball club. That'll be a challenge. And then we'll have about three days where we can really have two and three day practices before uh, we go to Hawaii. Okay, so there's still lots to come and we'll have more on the Eddie Sutton Show right after this. Welcome back. You know, Eddie Sutton's not only a great coach, he's also a great communicator. And that's the focus of our Off the Court feature this week. Here's Tom Dorado. Give pass, ball face, move it. If communication is indeed one of the real keys to success, then it's easy to see why Eddie Sutton has been highly successful both on and off the court. His brilliant 24-year coaching record reflects just how well he communicates with his players. His tremendous popularity with fans, alumni, and especially the student body continues to grow with each new season. The key, once again, is communication. Without a doubt, Eddie Sutton has brought new meaning to the post-game interview. Go to Tulsa, Brian, it's your turn. You're on the line with Eddie Sutton. Well, I think Less than 30 minutes after the final player. horn sounds, he's on the phone, courtside, talking to callers around the country about the game. That, uh, the format is unprecedented. <laughs> Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Eddie Sutton Call-In Show. Tom Dorado along with Eddie Sutton. And the Cowboys. Once a week throughout the season, he takes his hour-long live call-in show to the student body. Campus living areas take turns hosting the show. Well, I have a lot of fun doing this. Uh, guys, uh, I look forward to every uh, Monday evening. Uh, this week, it's Tuesday since we played last night, going around to the different living areas here on our campus. And the students have certainly uh, responded in a in a marvelous manner because uh, they always uh, make me feel very much at home. Over three years, the love affair has become mutual. 
He loves visiting with the students, and they can't wait for his arrival. It means a lot to me that, that he's taking some effort to come out and meet us and hear our opinions and take them for what they are. I think it's real important because uh, OSU basketball is really important to a lot of people, me included, and a lot of people from Stillwater and also OSU. And, and uh, you know, therefore, for Coach Sutton to come here and he can meet the fans and uh, just really personable. I mean, just answering questions, doing calling shows and, and uh, meeting people, he can really be in touch with uh, what Cowboy fans think. While Eddie will field anywhere between 15 and 20 questions during the hour, the most often asked question usually comes once the show has gone off the air. The young people always want to know, when will Coach Sutton visit our house again? Good piece by Tom Dorado. You know, I do have a lot of fun going around to different living quarters and getting to visit with the students at the fraternity sorority houses. Uh, and I also like that call-in show. I didn't think I would, especially <laughs> when you lose. It's not a lot of fun, but I think it's been a real good thing for Oklahoma State uh, basketball. And guys, it's good to have you on the show this year with with us, and uh, I look forward to being with you next week. Well, thanks, Coach. We do look forward to that. Again, Cal Davis and then Tulsa coming up, and we'll see you next week on the Eddie Sutton Show.